Well, the Centre for Social Impact has created a free world-class program exclusively for non-profit CEOs designed to fill a huge hole in the philanthropic sector. Well, joining me live is Aname Nalbandian, CEO of the Centre for Social Impact, and Dr. Nick Chapman, Sila graduate and CEO of Policy Cures Research. Thank you both so much for joining us. Nice to have some friends in the studio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Amine, first of all, can you give us a bit of a snapshot of the organisation and perhaps how the NFP sector can benefit from an increase in professional development, investment and training? Absolutely. Um, look, the Centre for Social Impact has been around for 15 years and we're actually an Australian leader in social impact education. Uh, and we also conduct research for the social purpose uh, sector. And I would say that uh, it's, it's pretty unequivocal and global research has shown for quite some time that who the leader of an organization is really matters to its success. Now, the corporate sector gets that. There's about 3.6 billion, I think, uh, invested in Australian uh, corporate sector professional development. But unfortunately, the not-for-profit sector doesn't have that same advantage. And what we uh, at the Center for Social Impact looked at after, uh, after years of research into what makes a best world-in-class um, leadership program, we, we realized that if we didn't do it, it's possible that nobody else would. So we're very proud of what we've created. It is a truly world-class rivals Harvard, Stanford, um, and all the top universities globally, a truly world-class leadership development program that's focused on giving not-for-profit CEOs and social purpose CEOs more broadly a chance to sit with their peers and gain a massive um, uh, experience in leadership of the self, but also of their organization and of what we call the system that they live in. Wow. And Nick, you know firsthand because you've completed the SILA program created by the Centre for Social Impact. So how did you find it and how are you feeling that it's making a difference for you? I, I mean, well, to start with, it, it has made me a better leader. I think that's a, an ongoing journey. But I mean, I've really noticed the difference and I think my team has too. And whether that's through, you know, leadership coaching, the retreats as part of being a sabbatical, three month sabbatical, where I was able to go off and undertake some of the learning that otherwise might have gone to Harvard. Um, it's given me tools that I, I just didn't have before. Um, and it's also strengthened our organisation, you know, partly through me being a better leader, but as well through coaching for my step-up leader, who also took on the role of a CEO while I was on sabbatical. So strengthening that sort of sustainability of the organisation. Uh, and it's enmeshed us more, as uh, Amine was saying, in this sort of network of other for-purpose organisations. And I think the um, outcome of having this really strong, close-knit, cohort of 24 CEOs who all have shared problems, um, shared solutions, and someone that you can lean on and continue to learn from, you know, beyond the program finishing has been you know, incredibly valuable. Yeah, so it's a 10 month program, I mean, and uh, we've obviously got some great feedback from Nick, but um, what are some of the other feedback that you've received? Yeah, I, look, I have to say I've been blown away by the feedback and we've been um, hearing from CEOs who are in the first cohort, second cohort, now we're going to South Australia and Western Australia for the third cohort. And they've, they've said it's been life changing. You know, it's changed the way that they see themselves as leaders, but importantly, how they see their roles and what level of ambition they're setting for themselves in their organization and in the broader system they operate in. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's really important to say that what makes this different is that it's a extremely high level of investment in not-for-profit leaders, and it's fully funded by some f four of Australia's most visionary philanthropic um, organisations. So I think $10 million, you know, over five years, that level of investment is not something that you normally see in the not-for-profit sector. And we've been just absolutely blown away. And importantly, it's been independently evaluated. That was really important for an evidence-based organisation like us. And the... Um, you know, the evaluation speaks for itself. It, it has uh, what I would call net promoter scores that are, uh, would, would be, uh, Harvard and Stanford would be very, very jealous of them. They're that high. <laughs> so it, it is an absolutely incredible uh, um, result and we're really proud of it. Yeah, fantastic. And Nick, tell us a bit about your organisation and what you've learned as a leader and what makes a good leader. So our organisation is trying to ensure that, that 
you know, the diseases um, uh, and health issues that primarily affect people in you know, low-income countries or poor populations in, in rich countries uh, still have you know, new drugs, new vaccines, new research to make sure that people aren't dying or suffering from ill health just, just because they don't represent a profitable market. And so it's an um, you know, incredibly challenging area um, and... It takes, I mean, all of our focus is really on the, on the purpose and we often don't invest in ourselves. And, and as, as not-for-profits, it's challenging to, to have, the, you know, we not, don't have big corporate um, performance uh, professional development budgets. Um, and so I think one of the things that I've realised about a leader is that it's, it shouldn't be done alone uh, and that you should always be, be learning and you need to actually create time to, for that learning. Uh, and, and that's what the, the SILA program has really enabled. And have you seen changes in leaders? I mean, speaking to a lot of different CEOs, the, the narrative has certainly moved and we've had a few buzzwords like empathy and, you know, all of that sort of stuff, but, you know, you still need a lot of drive and, you know, what, what have you seen as leaders and, and what do we see moving forward? Yeah, I, th I think overall, um, you know, what we've seen, and, and I would say in the not-for-profit sector, you know, empathy and, and those sorts of uh, those sorts of uh, leadership traits are probably core to what that sector does best. But what we've seen is actually um, each organization has had different development challenges and therefore has had different improvements. And I think that's really interesting because there isn't a cookie cutter approach to these sorts of really complex challenges. And you're not dealing with the usual, you know, what is the balance of um, our overall profit and loss statement. You know, it, it's something much deeper than that and, and re re requires a much more complex set of uh, leadership training. And that's, uh, this is an adaptive leadership program. So it does actually meet the leader where they are. Um, and yeah, as I said, we've been really, really impressed with the results. Well, yeah, again, the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? Um, it sounds it sounds fantastic. So what, what to from now, you know, where to from here? Well, I mean, I think that as an organisation, you know, we have grown since finishing the, the SILA program in that period significantly, um, both in terms of you know, our revenue and, and the number of people we employ, um, and we wouldn't have been able to do that as effortlessly um, without everything that the SILA program gave us. And, and we are looking to continue that, and, and really not for the sake of growing, but for the sake of having greater impact. Mm. And I was reading there's some stats on how, many, how much money Australians donate to charities, uh, it was something like $12 billion or more. Mm. Um, that, I would assume, includes organisations. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and, and, you know, the um, amount of money that goes into the sector is still probably, unfortunately, not enough to um, deal with the complexity of challenges that these organisations are dealing with. You know, there's some of the under, most under-resourced and under-pressure organisations. Burnout rates are really high in the not-for-profit sector. And I think what is really interesting here is, you know, there's no magic wand to fix the funding issue. But what we know is if we can invest really heavily in the people who are leading those organisations, that those dollars are going to go further because you're going to get a greater ambition, greater organisation, greater kind of um, connection around uh, those social purpose issues that the, these organisations are trying to solve. Mm. And um, obviously, Nick, you said that you you, know, you worked alongside other leaders. Um, what are some of the takeouts that you've learnt from them and no doubt they've learnt from you as well? Because, I mean, leaders can come in all different shapes and sizes. A leader could be a mum or it could be, a, you know, a boss, a CEO. Like, there's so many various leaders when you think about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think the incredible, there was incredible diversity amongst the, I mean, I'm just talking about the cohort that, that I was a part of. Um, and uh, from sort of based in Sydney, regional Australia, um, and across widely different um, fields, different types of organisations, different purposes. Um, but the thing that really struck me was how many of the challenges that we face are common. And even if they're not entirely um, overlapping, you know, there are things that you can draw from the experiences of others. Um, and that was just, you know, that came through time and time again. Fantastic. Well, lovely to meet you both, Nick and Amine, and good luck. Thanks so much for sharing. Thanks so much, Jimmy. Thanks, Jimmy.